Hi everyone, thanks for joining in. I'm excited to have Joanna Jenkins joining me today. Hi Joanna. Hi, how are you Jackie? Good, thanks. Um, just a little bit about Joanna. So Joanna grew up on a small farm in country Queensland. After graduating from the University of Queensland in the late 80s with degrees in English Literature and Law, she practiced as solicitor in big law, including for many years as a partner of an international law firm. In one firm she worked at, Joanna was the first person to work part-time after having a baby, and in another was for a couple of years the only female partner of the Brisbane office. She now writes full-time, married with three sons, Joanna lives in Brisbane, and How to Kill a Client is her first novel, and I've got my copy here. Yeah, I, I have a copy here, welcome. And just want to mention, I finished reading it a few days ago, really, really loved it. It was oh, a great um, book to, yeah, a few twists and turns and um, lots of things to get your mind stuck into, so thanks for writing that. Um, also want to mention to people watching that if you have any questions for Joanna, thanks to Ellen and Unwin, um, if you just type them in comments, you'll have a chance to win a copy of How to Kill a Client. So yeah, thanks again, Joanna. Just wondering if you want to start off by telling us a little bit about How to Kill a Client. Well, it opens with the death of uh, a law firm's major client, who is a young man who's only 39. He was fit. Um, he apparently had a heart attack but there's some doubt as to how that could have happened given he was so fit. And then it's not a spoiler to say, because we find out by the end of the first chapter, after they've been saying what a lovely chap he was, mm. um, one of the, the this young female partner says to one of the older partners, he wasn't a lovely, everyone's saying what a great guy he was. He wasn't lovely at all, he was a prick. Mm. <laughs> and so it turns out that he was a very unpleasant person. Mm. So the the, and he was unpleasant to everybody. And there certainly were a few um, potential suspects, weren't there? Yes. <laughs> Book was filled with them. Yeah. So what gave you the idea? Um, did you come across any clients like this in your... Uh, well, n none as bad. Like yeah. He, he does have, he's kind of a repository of every yeah. sort of bad trait that I've come across a little bit unfair but um no i wanted to write a book about law firm culture because we see you know they see a lot of um uh depictions of sort of big corporate law firms on television that don't mm. didn't quite ring true mm. and i wanted to write about law firm culture but the people who i was, who who i was primarily writing it for which is the the sort of women that i and men who i work with are really very busy and I needed to have some kind of what what we would call in my area of practice a delivery system to um uh to get them to read it and turn the pages and mm. so that's when I came up with the I I've been sort of thinking about it for a while but I came up with the idea of this you know the, that plot where this person dies off and then having a look at the way um, the firm reacts to that and the interactions between the partners mm. and the client. Mm. And when you first started writing, did you know who did it? Well, funny you should say that. Uh, no, I, uh, I, I can't be too specific about it, can I? Because I don't no, want to give we out don't want spoilers. spoilers but but yeah. Suffice it to say, the perpetrator has changed. There have been three perpetrators, so so uh, over the course of the many, many drafts of this book. Yeah. In fact, with the 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 first one, I, I sent it out to a, to an agent, and she rang me up and she said she said, oh, I really like it, but I just think I really wanted this fellow to die, and I think it's a little bit immoral, and you're going to have to change it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I did change it, and then it, after that, it changed again. So. Yeah. Yeah, and we've got a few people watching, so just wanted to say to those watching, if you've got any questions for Joanna, please type them in comments and I can read them, them out. And you can have a chance to win a copy of How to Kill a Client, thanks to Ellen and Unwin. Um, I've got a question from Sharon. She wonders how long the book took you to write. 
Uh, well, to actually write the book probably took about a year. Mm. Uh, but the big, the big limiting. Oh, that's my dog barking. <laughs> Um, someone will come and rescue. Uh, re <laughs> um, uh, so it, it took, um, yeah. So it took, probably took about a year mm. on and off to write it, but it took uh, about three and a half years to get an agent and then a publisher. Yeah. So that, that the hard factor was um, the getting the um, you know, get, getting into the publishing industry. That that was the sort of really difficult part of it. Yeah. And, and did you have quite a few rejections before? Quite a few. Yeah. Yes. How and did you keep even going? A lot. Yeah. And then possibly even worse than that was the no response. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, you're sitting there waiting and nothing happens. Mm. And after a while you have to, you know, you go through all the stages of grief. Mm. And finally you get to acceptance and think, okay, well, back to the drawing board yeah what made you keep going uh, it was a story that well i always wanted to be a writer but mm. this was a, a story that i wanted to tell and i i'd sent it out to a lot of my friends who uh had read it and really liked it and i i, I trusted them to tell me I, I i would have been able to detect if they were not if they were just being nice to me i, yeah. th I think they genuinely liked it mm. so i always thought that there was there was something there that just that should be published. I had I had faith in it. Yeah. Um. So I just kept on going. Although I I, I did at one point give up mm. and I moved on to something else. But, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then I pulled it back out again and thought, you know, <laughs> it, you know, it it does it. There's something here that and and I think really the crucial thing was getting the pitch letter right. Yeah. Yeah, because not only has the book got to be well written, you've also got to hit the vibe exactly. And yeah, it, and it was working out what the vibe was mm, mm. that was the was the um for the pitch email that which was the sort of the change I think. Mm, mm. And um, Rachel said, "Did do you think working previously in the law firms gave you inspiration and insights into your characters and storyline?" Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And, and in fact, that's why I wrote it. Yeah. I wanted to sort of, um, you know, cast a light on what it's really like yeah. inside, mm. inside those, those um, places. Mm. And Kim wonders what sort of genres you like to read yourself. And I'm wondering if there is something you've read lately you'd like to recommend to us. Uh, I read a, I read a lot of I read quite widely I read a lot of non-fiction mm. um, at the moment I'm reading Knights of Plague which is a um, by um, the Turkish um, Nobel Prize winner which is you know like it's a it's a hefty tone mm. uh, but uh, the death of John Lacey by my stable mate um, Ben Hobson is an excellent read I'd highly recommend that Thanks for that recommendation. Um, Kim wonders if you've started writing another book. I have. And in fact, I've finished the first draft. Because mm. it took up, so from the time, um, uh, from the time that I, so I signed with Alan and Unwin about 18 months ago. So yeah. it's taken a while for it to go through the sort of publishing and editing process. Mm. Uh, and during the time I did, in fact, write or finish another book. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. that will be next year. <laughs> yeah. And talking about another book, Rachel wonders if you are going to follow on with um, same or similar characters in a new novel. Yes. So the, this book that I'm hoping will be published next year mm -hmm. has the character Ruth uh, and, and a couple of other characters who uh, they're in a different setting. They're not in, they're, they're in the country. Okay. Not, not in the city. Mm, okay, sounds interesting. I'll I told you why that was. That would be a spoiler. Yeah, <laughs> I'll certainly be looking out for that because, like I said before, I really loved reading How to Kill a Client. So we'll be looking out for oh, more of you. your books. Um, Kelly wonders what has been the best part of your writing journey. Uh, I think learning how to how to do it and to explore the characters um yeah actually all parts of it have been 
right? Mm. Apart from projections, of course. Yeah. It's character yeah. building, I guess. Mm. Um, yeah, but I, I really do enjoy the writing and putting together the the plot and the, mm. and the characters. Mm. I do actually love it. Mm. And Sharon wonders how you chose your characters' names. Yeah, they're pretty, they're very generic Anglo-Saxon, um, yeah. So well, I, it was a it was a bit of trial and error. Mm. Um, I did actually, go, I, I would Google um, baby names from the 70s or, yeah. or the 80s yeah. to come up. I wanted Popular. something short and strong for Viv. Mm. Um and something a bit softer for Ruth. Uh, something a little bit, yeah, Gavin is a sort of fairly wispy name. Mm. I don't know, mm-hmm. it all sort of conjures up uh, someone who's fairly slight and wispy, but a little bit sort of stiffer. Yeah. That's why I think that, but maybe. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was trial and error, really. And mm. I did a lot of um, Global Replace. So they'd be called, you know, Sam, and I'd Global Replace to Philip. Okay, yeah. Mm. And, and see how they felt. Yeah, no, that's great. And Belinda, she um, says, have any of your law firm colleagues read your book? And what were their thoughts? They have. They have. Mm. I think there's furious... Um, speculation about who's who Who, and some of them seem to think they absolutely know who it is which can't be right because Mm. they're not anyone in particular they're everyone and no one if you know Mm. what i mean uh yeah but they've been really supportive actually it's been quite Mm. lovely and heartening yeah no that's great in fact i'm doing an event at my old firm on international women's day oh nice yeah Mm. Mm. And um, Kim wonders if there's anything you changed in your writing process for your second book. Uh, I think I was probably, so I kind of taught myself how to write Mm. with the first book. And so I was a bit more streamlined with plotting and, you know, just the discipline of sitting down to write every day or most days. Um, and I think I, could, I knew that I would get to the end. So, and I also knew mm. things like, you know, things that seem straightforward, like a book has to be around about 80,000 words and the books I write seem to be about 94,000 words mm. and, and that's okay. You mm. know, th- things that I had to, I, you know, I'd be sitting in Googling to work mm. out, you know, uh, you know, questions that should be quite basic. And I guess if I'd done a writing course, I would have been able to, um, you know, get the answer from a teacher but mm. yeah so so i guess i was a bit more confident really mm. that i yeah. would get to the end and you know the, and there would be a story if i just kept plugging away at it mm. Mm. and when you're writing do you have a favorite place to write uh yes i i write in the sort of in the in my house which is a queenslander mm. looking at my bookcases mm. and yeah that's what there's one of the bookcases there uh yeah uh, with the dog Mm. that you heard before Mm. yeah and any favorite snack or drink when you're writing Uh, i don't i do quite like a cup of tea yeah (laughs) yeah i'm trying to stay away from the snacks because of the Mm. effect it has (laughs) yeah And Kelly wonders if you um, had any input into the cover or and whether you chose the title yourself. Um, the cover was done by the Allen and Unwin team. Mm. I thought it's, a, it's very striking. I mean, once you see it in a book, you know, well, I'm sure you must have seen yeah, it in a book. It, is, it is actually really striking. It's actually, um, it's, it's, it's a great cover, I think. Yeah. The title... Well, it had very, I sold it as Gavin Jones is dead. And then I had long conversations with, you know, there were these long debates with the marketing department at Alan and Unwin because, you know, there were various reasons why um, th- that title wasn't suitable. And then it was going to be Death of a Client. And I couldn't do that because Ben Hobson's book was Death of John Lacey. And so actually as a joke, uh, you know, this had been going on for a few weeks. As a joke, I just sent off an email that said, how to kill a client. And they kind of went, snap. Mm, <laughs> mm. Yeah. 
And is there anyone in your, any character in your book that you feel you relate to more? Look, I'm very fond of both Ruth, Ruth and Bib. Mm. I am mm. very close. And Anne, uh, they're very close to my heart. I kind of became quite protective of them yeah. by the end. Yeah. And at the beginning in your um, bio, we, well, I mentioned like there's a couple of things being the first, was it the first part timer in your firm and um, the first, the only woman, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, the only yeah. female partner in the yeah. first time. Yeah. Like 20, par 20 partners, and I was the only chick. Mm. So you must have mm. a lot of stories from all that and yes. being groundbreaking <laughs> in those um places yeah, of your some, work. sometimes it felt like i was going into battle yeah when i, when I drove into work mm. No. Mm. i mean you know i love I, lo I love working with them mm. but seriously sometimes they just but i used to get out i used to you know if they said something really um terrible at end of meeting as they often did they mm. just make some horribly sexist comment mm. i used to grab my pen and my notebook and go can you just say that again? I'm just going to write that down for the legal action I'm going to be bringing. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I can imagine you'll probably have a lot more um, stories in you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I do love telling stories. It's, yeah. It's, it's... Mm. And are you writing full time now or are you still? Yeah. Yeah, and how's yeah, that? I hung up. I retired from the partnership and. Um, mm don't have a practicing certificate anymore mm. so no one can ask me if anyone asked me to give legal advice I'd say, i'm sorry oh. i cannot <laughs> it's actually illegal and how have you found the change in your lifestyle i completely love it yeah it's right mm. you know as edith piaf says no rien de rien. <laughs> don't don't regret anything mm. Mm. and is there anything that you love to do when you're not reading or writing uh, yeah, I, I, um, uh, I like wine and food and the beach mm. and traveling, mm. you know, reading, all the normal things, walking yeah. the dog, mm. going for a walk, swimming. Mm. No, sounds great. Mm. And, Actually, yeah. and anything, <laughs> so it sounds like you, so you didn't do any writing courses. You did a lot of Googling on how to write. Is there anything you thought maybe you should have done differently if you could have had that time again? Um, look, it probably would have been, uh, it, it might have been quicker if I'd done a course. Mm. But I, I, I actually quite enjoyed sort of figuring it out for myself. Mm. But, the, you know, that's, that's always, I've always been a bit like that. Um, but I, I can see that if I'd done a course, it might have been more efficient. Mm. And also, I would have, you know, met more people and yeah, nothing. Yeah. To go to. Well, I think oh, one one thing is that I I'm I'm quite happy staying at home on my own, and mm. sometimes I probably should get out of the <laughs> Have you been able to network with other authors now? Uh, yes, yes, I have. I've met mm. I've met a few. I met meet them online first, and then um you know, visit. Yeah. No, that's yeah. great. And Kim wonders if you ever think you might write a different genre. Uh yes, I'd like to. Mm. There's a um there's a there's a genre that I have a historical fiction book that I have okay. very clearly in my mind that I would like to write. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I I'm told that it's quite difficult to change genres, but We'll see. Mm. And I would also imagine with a historical fiction, maybe a lot more research could be involved. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm. And I'm wondering with how to kill a client, what came first, the plot, the characters, or the location? Um I think what came first was this sort of I this concept about writing a book about you know, corporate culture. Mm. That was that was what came first. This sort of idea, and then, um, then that 
plot idea, as I said before, uh, to sort of, you know, as a delivery system, sort of drive the mm. story and get people turning the pages. And then the, the characters sort of came. I, I mean, I knew that I wanted it to be about women yeah. in that environment. Uh, and, and those characters just sort of came out as I started writing. Mm. Mm. And Kelly wonders if there was an author who inspired you to originally start writing. Uh, look, well, uh, yeah, there's been there's been a lot. Mm. I think um, I do love Pride and Prejudice. I love I love the way yeah. Jane Austen has that wry that wry look at the world where she's sort of picking it apart. Uh, you know, you're in the room with the character and she's sort of picking it apart with this wonderful humour. So that, she's always been a great inspiration to me and I read Pride and Prejudice regularly. Mm, mm. <laughs> um, but there have been a lot, you know. And I, I it, you know, when I'm writing, it's actually, I find it hard to read books because if I really love the book, I'll start, you know, I'll start trying to write in that style. Yeah. You know, kind of back of the way and go, go back to my own yeah yeah and do you have a favorite crime writer uh, i like Dave mckinnon who's yeah. actually also a lawyer mm. of course <laughs> um, yeah yeah oh thanks um oh i've got another question as well rachel rachel um wonders what made you bite the bullet bullet and leave your law career to pursue your passion in writing well, actually, I had a terrible accident oh, and no. had a broken. Well, it, it you know, I just, I was injured. I had mm. a, my arm. I had a broken arm for a year. And no, then okay, well, that's bone quite a long. And it was yeah. just, it was just quite, you know, mending bones when mm. you're in your fifties. Actually, quite exhausting. Mm. And then I thought, I've, I've just, you know, I've been talking about doing this. It's always been, you know, and I've just got to do it. Um, and so, I did. Yeah. So it was sort of like fate. But it, that was probably it was brought you to it. Uh, mm. Yeah, probably brought me to it. Made me realize, you know, like I found it really hard to get to work. Yeah. Just during that time, and sort of made me realize, you know, we are fallible. Mm. Um, if you're gonna do it, you know, have to. Mm. Yeah. Mm. well thanks oh, so much for chatting with me it's been great talking to you so and me. we'll be looking out for more of your books and for those who haven't read how to kill a client totally recommend you go out and get a copy um also want to thank the people who asked questions we had some really great questions yeah, it was great thank you so thanks. i really enjoyed it thanks everyone bye bye, -bye. thank you